Today, the Speakmans are set to face one of their biggest phobia challenges to date. They are live from Leeds with 18-year-old agoraphobic Shaquille, pretty much housebound because of her debilitating fear. Shaquille has been a prisoner in her home for three years and is terrified of the world outside her front gate. Well, as ever, the Speakmans believe that they can help her. So good morning to Nick and Eva and, uh, and also to Shaquille, who's there as well with Mum. Um, good this morning, is, guys. This has been a huge effect on the whole family, hasn't it? Oh, it's been a huge effect, absolutely. I mean, we're sat, we're sat in the lounge here and Shaquille has been a prisoner in this lounge for four years. And so let me show you what our mission for today is. This has been her prison um, now for the last four years uh, and her world has stopped just here. And for something that we all find such a simple task of just walking outside and walking down her path, her world literally ended there and our mission for today, Phil and Holly, is to get her through her front gate and open her world to her so that all this anxiety can end once and for all. OK, Eva, thank you very much. Good luck. It sounds like you've got your work cut out. We'll catch up with you, you a little bit later. Yes. Will Shaquille successfully step outside of her front gate for the first time in three years? Fingers crossed and, of course, we'll keep you posted on her progress throughout the show. Welcome back. All week, the Speakmans have been answering SOS calls from those desperate need of phobia intervention. They've already tackled atomic kitten star Liz McClellan's fear of flying and one viewer's phobia of dentists. And with one in ten people admitting they suffer from agoraphobia in our exclusive survey, can the Sweetmans help an agoraphobic viewer leave her home for the first time in four years? It's definitely one of the most challenging tasks they've ever been set. Well, the Sweetmans are in Leeds now and they're live from 18-year-old Shaquille Crosby's living room and hoping to cure her of her phobia. Before we talk to them all, here's how the fear of the outdoors has turned Shaquille into a prisoner in her own home. I used to go out with my friends, now I don't, and then I had to stop going to school at 15. Shaquille is as she is now. It's like a different person. She's, she's like a shadow of her former self. She used to be happy-go-lucky. Now there's certain days when she just doesn't even smile. When it all first started, they were on our way down to the train station, totally fine. We got out of the taxi to enter the train station. She started feeling a bit sick, a bit dizzy. So, you know, I got hold of her hand. I went, oh, we'll be fine. It must be a bug that you're getting. She started panicking, she started crying, um, shaking, um, feeling sick. My heart starts beating and I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. Um, the panic on her face is, is like something that you see on a film, on a horror film. And from that day, she never went out again. I didn't even experience being an 18 year old because I got ill when I was 15. Some people don't understand it, like you can't go out your front door. It's as if there's, there's a brick wall that she just can't pass. She's got no... She's got no quality of life at all. It's like everyone's doing everything and, and I'm not doing it. Going on, first time going on holiday and I ain't even been on holiday yet. Well, let's go over to Leeds now, where the Speakmans are with agoraphobic Shaquille Crosby and her mum, Nicola, who nominated her for phobia intervention. Good morning to you all. Um, Shaquille, I wanted to speak to you because morning. you say that actually this has kind of left you feeling very guilty, particularly towards your mum, because it's not just your life on hold, it's hers also. Yeah. I think you feel that your mum, yeah, Shaquille does feel that her, her mum has had to kind of completely give up on her own life um, and Nicola's not working now, she can't leave the house for long periods uh, and it has not just affected Shaquille but Nicola seems to be suffering equally. Yeah, yeah. So we've looked at the world that sh surrounds you, Shaquille, you know, we've seen that you get to the front door, but you can actually get as far as the gate. Uh, sometimes, but the, it's quite weather dependent as well, isn't it? What, when can you sit outside? Can you ever sit outside in the sunshine? 
Some days I can sit outside and then some days I can't go to the front door. So it depends on, on is it weather or does it depend on your mood? It depends on my mood and how I feel. Yeah, because I know that also we were reading this morning that on, it's, it's better for you, you feel better if it's not a bright sunny day to, to go outside, which is once again something else that you don't get to enjoy. You don't get to enjoy the, the, the sunshine. So uh, Nick and, uh, and Eva, uh, how successful do you think you're going to be this morning? Well, I think, I think we've got a, certainly got a challenge ahead of us. Obviously, Shaquille gets very anxious and feels like she's going to faint um, if she gets towards the gate. Uh, but I've got to say that this is going to be, you know, such a fantastic experience for us all because to be able to set Shaquille free, she's such a young girl, uh, and to see her trapped is, is absolutely heartbreaking. Well, the Speakmans have been working That's with... That's the interesting thing about Agora. Oh, sorry, go on, carry on. If you finish off, I was... Uh, the, the interesting thing about agoraphobia is that... She kills a prisoner, but the bars are invisible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you for that. We'll come back to you in, in a bit. Uh, as I said, they've been working with Shaquille all morning. Earlier, they took her outside to see just how crippling her agoraphobia is. If you just come down the steps. So what I want to do, I want to understand how this affects you. And Eva and Tom, though, are just going to look at your heart rate as we do this. Is that all right? Yeah. So if you just come on with me, let's see how far you can get. So what is the furthest that you've been in recent years? Um, to the gate? Yeah, to the yeah. Okay, so it's, it's actually starting to go up quite a lot, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's hovering around 150 now. It was around 120 uh, when we did the baseline recording earlier. Okay. So, so as you walk towards the, the gate, how do you feel? Start getting nervous, yeah, and feeling like I'm too far, still too far away. Okay. Her galvanic skin response as well, uh, which is another indicator of stress, is about double what it was. Does that get worse as we're going closer to the gate? Yeah. I can see you getting a bit upset now as well, mm. aren't you? Yeah. Mm. And then start getting more nervous when I get to here. And what does this mean to you just right here? That I'm too far away, that I'm going, I'm going onto the street. OK, and what, what would that mean? Uh, that I'm out of my safe zone, that I'm in, just in the street where other people are. Th this is my safe zone. So beyond that gate is outside of your safe zone and you just can't do it? Yeah. And you've not been there for how long? Um, I don't know how long, for ages. OK, yeah. and I can see you getting very upset now, so I think, I think I've seen enough now, so let's go back. So it's starting to drop a little bit, but that's, I'm guessing, because Nick's assuring yeah. her that she doesn't think, have to go. Yeah, I think she's got an implicit trust of Nick, so... Yeah. OK. Yeah. Sorry to put you through that, but obviously we just need to see how that affects you, yeah. so we know what we're working with. Are you feeling better already, just walking back to the house? Yeah. Because I'm looking at you now, you don't seem as upset now, do you know you're going back in? Yeah. OK. Right, we know exactly what we need to work with, so come on, let's go and do that. Come on. So, wow. what's interesting here, Nick, is that you say that actually with agoraphobia, there's always a root, there's always a reason that makes the person agoraphobic in the first place. You just need to find it. That's right. I mean, ultimately, it's a complex phobia because agoraphobia is the symptom. The cause is usually other underlying phobias. All right, guys. Well, we'll let you um, get to work. Uh, I Good know luck. that uh, this is quite complex, yeah. uh, and in fact, Thank it's something you. that you, you actually started a little bit earlier on. So, uh, so we'll catch up with you all later on and hopefully we'll have the amazing success that we've had with our other two cases this week. So thank you very much indeed. Wow. Good luck, Shaquille. <laughs> Welcome back. We're live until 12.30. All morning, the Speakmans have been live from Leeds where they're attempting to cure 18-year-old Shaquille Crosby of her agoraphobia. Let's see how they've been getting on. Nick and Eva are up there now. Hello. How, how's it been so far? Hi. Hi. Yeah, we're doing really well. Obviously, it's the first time that we've actually worked with Shaquille, so we've had a lot to get through. Uh, we're having to change a lot of her thought processes because this started when she was 14 or 15. Um, so we're just sort of trying to work on all her thought patterns as they were then and bringing them into today so that she's got a completely different outlook. But, yes, yeah, so far, so good, Holly and Phil. Good. good. We'll Sounds let you get back positive. to work then. Thank you very much indeed. More from them later when we go back to Leeds to see if Shaquille can successfully get out of her front gate for the first time in four years. Welcome back. Still to come, Corrie's new man of mischief, Mark Bayliss, and a performance from the cast of Burn the Floor. 
Now, though, the uh, the moment we've all been waiting for earlier this morning, we sent the Speakmans one of the biggest phobia challenges they'd ever faced. We sent them to Leeds to answer an SOS call for a phobia intervention. 18-year-old <coughs> Shaquille Crosby suffers from severe agoraphobia and hasn't been able to successfully leave her house for four years. Here's a reminder of what happened earlier this morning. OK. So as you walk towards the gate, how do you feel? Start getting nervous, yeah, and feeling like I'm too far, still too far away. OK. Does that get worse as we're going closer to the gate? Yeah. I can see you getting a bit upset now as well, mm. aren't you? Yeah. Mm. And then start getting more nervous when I get to here. And what does this mean to you, just right here? I'm too far away that I'm going. I'm going onto the street. Okay. What do, what would that mean? Uh, that I'm out of my safe zone. That I'm in just in the street where other people are. Th this is my safe zone. So beyond that gate is outside of your safe zone, and you just can't do it. Yeah. And you've not been there for how long? Um, I don't know how long. For ages. Okay. Yeah. And I can see you getting more upset now. So I think I think I've seen enough now. So let's go back. So there you go, that was earlier today, and as you just saw, Shaquille was so terrified of the world outside her home, she's not been able to get past her front gate for four years. But there is hope. The Speakmans are there. Nick, how's it going? It's going fantastic. Uh, Shaquille, Shaquille's at the door here. How do you feel, Shaquille? Fine, thanks. She feels yeah. fine. Uh, Shaquille's OK, but I'm more actually worried at this moment in time about Shaquille's mum, who's over there with Eva. <laughs> How are you feeling, Nicola? Excited, nervous. How's this yes. going to change your life? Oh, Ch change the, his life for the better. Oh. I, can't, I can't believe it. Well, well we, we wanted to get her out the gate. We've moved a little bit further back, um, just so that we can be absolutely sure that she's over this. So it's now down to your lovely daughter and Nick. Yes, so yes. Here Excited. we go. Yes. Here we go. Nick, are you ready, Watch Shaquille? Yeah. OK? Yeah. So this is the furthest that you could go before. How are you feeling right now? But I'm feeling fine. You're feeling fine? Yeah. What's the What's your kill's heart rate like, Tom? It's about 10 beats per minute lower than it was at this stage. Before. Fantastic. Are we ready to progress? Yeah. OK. Now, you said to me before, Shaquille, that if you got beyond this point here, yeah. that you knew that we'd successfully treated you. Mm. Are you sure you want to cross? Yeah. Just before we do, what's the heart rate like now, Tom? It's steady, it's still about the same. Brilliant, same okay. Rate. And there's go. your mum. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> well oh. done. How do you feel? Fine. Well done. Oh. Very proud of you. Are you okay? Yeah. 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 This life changes. So I Sorry, we're all very emotional over here, <laughs> but I've, I, I hope you've enjoyed the journey with us. Um, and I think we're all a bit speechless, to be honest. Well, so so now oh, you've yeah. now you've oh. done that, and we can see that anyone watching this morning will have known it, and we just recapped it how difficult that moment was to cross from the safe area before the gate to the real world outside the gate. Shaquille, how far do you think you can now go? Because we've seen you to that point. Do you feel confident that you could walk off down the street now and go into town? Yeah, I feel much more confident. So this really is going to open up a whole new world to you. I mean, we know that you had to leave school early and you've, you've never been on a plane, you've never been on holiday. I mean, you must be just so excited about all these different things that could come into your life. Yeah, I feel so much better that I'm going to be able to go to town, to go anywhere. So what are your plans today then? Are you going to are you going to test this today? Are you going to go into town today? Um, we're going for something to eat this evening. Yes. Are you? Going to celebrate, aren't we? Have you ever been, when was the last time you went out for a meal as a family? Four or five years ago. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nick and Eva, can I ask you? Earlier on, we were talking about you know the root. There's a root. There's a reason for these for agoraphobia coming. For somebody being agoraphobic. Um, when when you were discussing this with Shaquille, what 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 did you find? What actually happened in Shaquille's case is that she went out after school with a friend, and she felt that she was going to faint, and instead of 
putting that into perspective and thinking I'm going to faint because it never happened to her before. It actually made her concerned and it created a schema that made her frightened of going outside. And then later on, the day after, she went to the train station and had the same feeling again. And basically, she was protecting herself from that ever happening. So she became a prisoner. Amazing. Nice. Amazing. Incredible. Shaquille, will you do me a favour? Um, when you go out this evening for your meal, um, will you take some pictures for us and, uh, and send them in? So that we can we can see you guys out, and we can see you maybe in the car going, or you know, st standing outside further away from your house than where you are. Will you do that? We can show them on the program tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Have Thank a you very much time. indeed. So take a whole load of pictures, and we'll look forward to seeing them tomorrow. Have a lovely meal this evening. And congratulations. As a Welcome to the rest of your life. Thanks. And uh, and to Nick Thanks. and Eva, we'll see you back in the studio tomorrow because we've got another one we need to do. Oh, thanks. Sure, bye, bye, guys. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Honestly, it's like magic. It's amazing, isn't it? It's incredible. Oh, it's extraordinary. There we go. Can't believe um, it. So we've got uh, three down, two to go. Speakmans are back again tomorrow, as I said, and they'll be tackling the fear of dolls in another mm -hmm. live phobia intervention. <laughs> Okay, well yesterday Nick and Eva met teenager Shaquille Crosby. Now she'd not left her home since experiencing a huge panic attack in Leeds four years ago. Well they had the great results during the course of the programme and managed to help Shaquille take her first steps past the gate. Well after the show something amazing happened. Nick and Eva took her back to the scene of her panic attack to see if she could finally face her demons. Shaquille, earlier this morning the whole nation saw you walk out of your house for the very first time in four years. But there's one more thing to do. Leeds Station, this is where it all started. We want you to go off there and both of, both of you yes. get your life back right now. Off you go. Oh, fantastic! Oh, so tell me, this is where it happened. How do you feel? Good, I feel better. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Well, like, there's train behind there, so if you could jump on a train now and go anywhere, where would you go? Go to London. Would you really? Yeah. Oh, well, in that case, I think that uh, if you're going to London, you need to pop in and see Phil and Holly. I'm sure they'd yes. be there. They'd yes. love to congratulate you. Well, it's our oyster now. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to do, we'll do it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, it was an astonishing result. Now, there are certain, there are people who've been quite cruel surrounding this story and have mm -hmm. said, well, you cured it so quickly, it wasn't agoraphobia in the first place. Absolutely right, which is, it's really unfortunate that um, because she, she has obviously had agoraphobia, she's been stuck in a house, and a lot of people just couldn't believe that we could have possibly got her out of a house so, so quickly, and we completely do, completely understand that. However, Shaquille had a belief it was an incorrect belief, and obviously, if you completely alter a belief, giving massive evidence to the contrary, then you will stop believing it. And that's exactly what happened with Shaquille. She set something up at the age of 14 in the train station. Obviously, it could have been anywhere. It wasn't specific to the train station. So you discovered um, a specific moment of fear. You, that's right. You exactly. discovered which, exactly. which medically is known as a schema. Yep. It's a cognitive thought process. Yeah. But that schema was driving Shaquille's behaviour in the wrong way. And therefore she felt that if she went out of her house, she was going to be in danger. Yeah. And we changed that schema. And I know that it was like miraculous and it was very quick, but ultimately, you know, we can all experience, we can all have a schema that drives our behaviour and the day after we can just totally change it. Yeah. You know, we've all had previous relationships and we think we're in love, this is for the rest of my life, and then you find something out and in an instant, that person's down the road. Yeah.